Having had some great results with Stable Diffusion 2.1 and Dream Booth, I thought I'd set myself a little challenge and make it as difficult as possible. So I'm going to be doing much the same thing, but without using Dream Booth. I'm going to have an image that I want to pose in a specific way, and I want a specific character to be in that pose. Although I've only got one image in my data set, and I'm only using one vector per token for the embeddings, and I'm not allowed to use any extensions. I'm just using Automatic 11.11 and the built-in training tab. For this reason, I have chosen a Pixabay model as my character there. It got some very distinctive features such as the, the nose, the very red lips, the blue eyes, and the rather copious amounts of hair. As I only have one image in my data set, will Stable Diffusion be able to pull this off? Will it have her facing in other directions, even though it's just this one photo of her facing forward? Now, one note to make is that all these prompts have also been kept deliberately simple in order to aid comparisons in this test scenario. So don't take any of these images as examples of the most extravagant and amazing AI art in the world. This is just data, so we can test the effects of the various changes that we make along the way. Also note that while I'm using a human face for all of these tests, it could just as easily be a picture of your pet or your favorite style. I decided to use faces as it's very easy to pose them and see if it's actually in the right place or not. As faces typically come with things like uh, bodies, uh, that means they can also be very, very easily posed and positioned as well. In a previous video, we already saw the quality of Dream Booth with SD2 versus SD 1.4 and 1.5. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at three of the Stable Diffusion 2 models. Those three models are the 512 Depth model, the 512 Base model, and the 768V model. If you want to add any of these models to use yourself in Automatic 11.11, it's very easy. It's just a case of downloading your chosen model into the Stable Diffusion Models directory and then making sure you have the correct related configuration file in that same directory as well. All the information you need is over on the Hugging Face site. That site has links to all the model files and to the Stable Diffusion repository. So download whatever you fancy and you are away. As support for the depth model in Automatic 11.11 is fairly new, let's use that one as an example. So here we download the 512 depth model and you want to copy the version 2 Midas inference YAML file from the stable diffusion config directory. Then ensure both files, the checkpoint and the YAML config file, just have the same name. You can call them whatever you want. There, I've given them fairly default boring names, but you could call them both egg or both fish if you wanted. As long as they got the same name, you're good. As we're only looking at the built-in training, it's very easy to test this for yourself. In the training tab here, we've got just two very basic options. You can create an embedding or you can create a hyper network. Here are the settings that I used to create the embedding to start with essentially everything as default, just one vector per token. Initialization text I kept as the star and I just typed in the name of my embedding there. And here are the settings that I use to train the embedding. Most of it's default. I have changed the embedding learning rate slightly. Basically, it starts off at the normal default and then just drops slightly over time. Batch size of one because I've only got one image gradient accumulation of one. Everything else is default pretty much. I've changed that to subject there. The size is 768 by 768. Max steps a thousand. Save every hundred. Uh, save images with a PNG as well. And the only other thing I've changed really there is the change latent sampling method to deterministic. Now there's two training options down the bottom there. Obviously, when you've selected the embedding, you select the train embedding option and I just let that run through for a thousand steps. When I was training for the 512 model, I did change the size down to 512 by 512 just to make it slightly fair, pick the native resolutions for the various models I was training against. Some basic statistics from when I was training when I did the uh, Stable Diffusion 2768 embedding my maximum VRAM usage was around 7 gig. So if you've got an 8 gigabyte VRAM card, then you should be able to do all this textual inversion stuff 
even at the higher resolutions. Performance was a little bit slower than the 512, of course. It was about 3.5 iterations a second. So to run that whole 1,000 steps at 768 resolution took about five minutes. When creating the Hyper Network, I did make some slight changes. I picked all of the modules. I also selected Use Dropout, and then I created the Hyper Network. Training for the Hyper Network was exactly the same as all the defaults. I didn't bother changing the Hyper Network learning rate, just left that the same, and everything else was the same as for the embedding. So a batch size of one, gradient accumulate one, size, max steps a thousand, etc. All the same as the embedding. Now, one thing to note with training the Hyper Network is that it did need a lot of VRAM. This took up to 19 gigs when I was doing the 768 by 768. I didn't actually test a 512 one. This was also a lot slower at around 13 minutes, primarily because it doesn't work without the minus minus no half option. So when I ran this without minus minus no half, all I got was not a number and just black images coming out of the hyper network. And this was even with Xformers enabled. The settings, I also made some changes here. We have the default training option where none of these are ticked and basically I just ticked all of them. So move VAE clip to RAM and turn on pin memory, save optimizer state for the hyper networks and also use cross attention optimizations when training. Just turned all of those on. And just to start with, as it is fairly new to Automatic 11.11, the 5.12 depth model. Let's just have a quick look at what this is good at. Basically, it takes the shape of the images that you provide, creates a depth map, and then you get some output from that. So here we have an example of impressionist art style portrait for which with long detailed intricate hair made of yarn. As you can see, it is very, very similar to the original image. I think that's a very nice output. However, it can even work on images that don't have any obvious depth like an illustration. So how would it handle an illustration? Let's take a look. And there, even though there's no realistic depth in there, it seems to have handled that rather nicely too. And the basic setup I'm using for most of these tests is like this. This is my standard face. So I want to get the face up there at the top of the image and hopefully looking in the same direction. Most of these others are the defaults that I use here. So sampling steps 30, I'm using DPM, plus plus 2M most of the time. Depending on the model, I'll either be using 512 or 768. A uh, guidance scale of 7 and a denoising strength of 0.7. And of course, I'm using the same seed every time. Here we'll just have a very quick example of using this photo face hyper network, which is the one I trained on that one image. Here I've got the hyper network strength and hyper network as quick options at the top. You can go into settings and put whatever quick things you want up there. So here I've got my checkpoint, hyper network and hyper network strength. If we have a quick look at this one, this is just a very, very basic example with those default settings that I mentioned. And that is how it comes out. It's interesting. It's very close. It is positioned nicely. They've got the, the face in the right place. Uh, we've got the, the red lips there. We've got the hair. The eyes are a little bit brown, but it is very close, so not bad for a hyper network. Now let's see what happens if we vary the guidance scale and the denoising strength. Here is the XY grid showing you a quick summary up there in the top left corner. There's basically not very much change. And down there in the bottom right corner, you can basically see the maximum change. Up here on the first row, we can see if we've got a very low guidance scale, then it actually seems to do quite well in the higher denoising strengths. We have the character's face, the lips, and the characteristic hair. You can also see there is a fair sort of dividing line around denoising strength 0.7 to 0.8, where the image starts to change a lot more. If we zoom out, we can see there's sort of a line going down in a diagonal direction there. Down at the high end of the chart, here with a guidance scale of 15 and a denoising of one, it has actually turned into a painting. So it's fully followed our prompt there and it does kind of look like her. We've got many of the basic characteristics in the required pose. Now, if we look at a quick comparison of changing the prompt slightly, so from painting to photo, drawing, graffiti art image and fantasy art illustration, 
along with a number of different samplers, we can see that some words have quite a different strength to others. For example, there, graffiti art has definitely changed the image quite a lot, whereas drawing doesn't seem that much different to photo or painting. Fantasy art illustration isn't very fantasy art, but it has indeed changed the image. And while Euler A there has quite a good output, it's quite aesthetically pleasing, I think DPM++ 2SA has got closer to the required characteristics of the blue eyes, the red lips, and that copious hair. Here we can see the hyper network strength versus the number of steps, and as expected, we've got very little change up in the top left corner, down to the maximum amount of change in the bottom right. We also seem to have a characteristic tipping point around 0.7, where the image changes and becomes a lot more like the trained face. And that covers the basic tests for the hyper network only. I'm next going to be doing the embedding and the embedding and the hyper network together. Let's have a look at how those come out. So here I have the 512 embedding, again, still with a 512 depth EMA checkpoint. And there is the painting of the face with all the default settings. I think it's come out quite nicely, but that is a very white painted face. Let's have a look at those XY grids to see how we can change this. Again, I've got the guidance scale versus the denoising strength. Where again, we've got the characteristic diagonal line going down there, the weakest up in the top left and the strongest down in the bottom right. It certainly looks like a painting. Once again, it changes sort of around seven, depending on the guidance scale. If the guidance scale is higher, obviously it seems to change more, but we've got a very good painting there, I think, even with guidance scale three and high denoising, that's quite good. It's, it's in the right pose. It's got the red lips, it hasn't necessarily got the blue eyes, but it has got the copious hair. So that's come out very nicely. As you can see, it's very different to the hyper network, but operates in much the same way. If we have a look at that style versus sampler test, once again there, we have the painting, the photo, the drawing, the graffiti art, and the fantasy art illustration. And once again, the graffiti art is a very strong word for only two of the samplers there, Euler and the DPM++ 2SA, definitely very graffiti. Whereas for the other samplers, not so much. The painting seems to have worked quite nicely, as does the fantasy art illustration. The photo is a bit, well, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to make your own decisions about that. Obviously, I haven't done a hyper network strength for that one because it is not a hyper network. Now let's have a look at using the 768 embedding. So even though I'm using a 512 model, there I am using a 768 embedding. How does that come out? Is it exactly the same? Is it different? It's completely different. So let's have a look at the 768 embedding on the 512 depth EMA model. So once again, we have the guidance scale versus the denoising strength. And as you can see, sort of around the 0.7 mark, depending on the guidance scale, is where the image really starts to change. If we take a look at the style versus sampler, here we can see the graffiti art image once again is very, very strong and actually affects all of the samplers in this instance. And finally, for this model, the 512 depth, let's have a look at using them both together. So I'm actually using the hyper network and the embedding together. There, I've got also got the photo face in the prompt itself, so as strong as it can get, and we have quite an interesting result, but we do have the characteristic hair and the lips. Let's have a look at those grids. So when we're using the hyper network and the embedding together, and we've got everything all there in the prompt, this is the result. We've got a very, very strong image down in the bottom right corner there that is obviously far too high. It is starting to sort of saturate and go really, really weird. So we've got some strong prompting for this character. And once again, the low guidance scale and the high denoising strength seems to produce a fairly good output. We've got the red lips, eyes once again are brown, but we do have the copious amounts of hair. If we take a look at the samplers versus styles, once again, the graffiti art image 
is quite good. I do actually quite like that one. Once again, with Euler A graffiti art image, that's quite nice. That's a good output. But the other ones are not very similar. That's not a drawing. That's not really a photo. And those aren't particularly fantasy art illustrations. These are all things that you can fix with prompting and other embeddings and stuff. But these are just default tests. Here, I am now varying the strength of the hyper network and testing it against the number of steps. Once again, we've got the least change in the top left and the most change down in the bottom right. Now to switch models, and this time I'm looking at the Stable Diffusion 2.1 512 base model. Now, one thing to note about this model that's very different to the depth model is that we can actually train off this one. I tried training off the depth model and couldn't. Additionally, the depth model you can't use in standard text to image. You can only use it in image to image. So the output image that you get is not only affected by the prompts that you provide it, so you want it as a painting, but if you input a painting, then you'll get some painting characteristics out as well. And one thing to note about this model is, even though it doesn't have that depth, it is still very good at recognizing faces and putting things in the correct position. So here we have an impressionist style portrait of a witch with long hair made of yarn and it's put the face in the middle just like the sample image. It can also handle illustrations once again there we have the face in exactly the right place and it seems to be a very similar pose. I'm also giving it a 768 by 768 output here so it can upscale a little bit as well. As mentioned before these are all test images so if you want to make a particular image a little bit better I would suggest using some negative prompts. There we have the same thing, but I've just thrown some negative prompts in to change the style. Okay, now let's take a look at the hyper network by itself. Here we have just those default settings as always, the DPN++ 2M 30 steps, guidance scale 7, and denoising strength 0.7 with that same seed. So that's kind of the, the midpoint of it. And that looks interesting, that looks interesting, but let's dive into those XY grids. This is the 512 base model with that hyper network. And once again, we can see this very, very distinctive line here around 0.7. It seems pretty bad. Denoising 0.8, and it's a completely different picture. Even if it does look like quite good, it's our character with some rather trendy looking sunglasses on. It's not exactly what we want. I think once again here around denoising strength 0.6, and a fairly low guidance scale, depending on what you want your output to be like. If we take a look at the sampler versus style, once again, we can see that the prompt hasn't had a massive impact on that. We can, of course, use negative prompts to overcome this, but this is just a basic test to show you the most simple possible ways of doing things. And these all look the same to me. So yes, the prompt doesn't have a massive impact here. If we take a look at the hyper network strength versus the number of steps, once again, we see over in the top left, not very much change down to dramatic change in the bottom right. Obviously, that is far too much. I think a hyper network strength of around 0.4 to 0.5 and maybe just 10 or 20 steps would seem best in this particular case. And next, just taking a look at the embedding, so no hyper network this time. We're just using the 512 embedding and all those usual default settings. And it has come out not bad. It is indeed a painting. It has some of the characteristics. Although, as we know already, that guidance scale and denoising strength are probably a bit too high to keep the pose. Let's have a look at the XY grids to see where the optimal point is here. Once again, around denoising strength 0.7, we start to have some very dramatic changes. As you can see there, the denoising strength of 1.0 produces some very cool looking outputs. Once again, I do like that high denoising and high guidance scale there, but it's not exactly what we want. If we want our character's face posed in this particular way, I think I would go for a denoising strength somewhere between 0.5 and 0.6 and a guidance scale somewhere between five and seven. If we check once again, the samplers versus the styles, Euler gives us some very nice output. And this time the prompt does seem to have had quite a dramatic impact. The graffiti art image, once again, a very nice favorite of mine, the photo not looking very photo and the drawing being completely not a drawing.
Can you use the 768 embedding on the 512 model? Yes, you can. And here is the output. So now I am testing the 768 embedding. Once again, no hyper network. And I'm using the Stable Diffusion 2.1 512 base model still. As you can see there, the 0.7 default outputs are pretty good. It's much like the trained image, but it's a bit too high to keep the pose. And yet again, with this embedding, we get some quite dramatic changes, although at a different point. Before, as you could see, the 0.7 was the point where it changed. Here, we've got more like 0.9 and 1. And once again, some very dramatic and fantastic images if you do turn the denoising up. But for our particular purposes, I think it's a little bit difficult to get any better than that midpoint image. Denoising 0.6 and guidance scale about 7. Comparing the styles with this 768 embedding, we can see once again compared to the hyper network where it didn't change very much, these embeddings are influenced by prompt style quite heavily. Once again, the graffiti art image being very nice, the fantasy art style illustration being a little bit strange, the painting's quite good, and the photo and drawing will need more prompting. If we put both of those together, so here I am using the hyper network and the embedding, the 768 embedding together, and we get a little bit of a nightmare creature, but it definitely does have those characteristics. It's got the lips and the rather copious amounts of hair. The XY grids will show us more, and here we can see that characteristic tipping point around 0.7. There it changes into a very different picture, very much more like that single image that we had for our data set. If we're looking to keep the pose in this particular instance, then the midpoint is, it's a nice image, but it's not keeping the pose. Unfortunately, for that amount of latent manipulation, we're probably looking at a denoising strength more of about between 0.4 and 0.5. Comparing the styles and samplers when using both the embedding and the hyper network, you can see they're all fairly similar. The graffiti art does have a little bit of an impact, but it is quite overpowered by that hyper network. We tone that hyper network down a bit. Here we've got the various different strengths versus the steps. We can see that it does keep the pose a little bit more, but we do have to turn the hyper network strength all the way down. And the final model that I'm doing testing on here is the Stable Diffusion 2.1768 V model. Again, this hasn't got any depth in it, but it does still produce some very nice images that follow your initial image very well, positioning faces correctly with things like illustrations as well as photographs. Once again, notice that if you use negative prompts, you can vary the image output quite dramatically. As before, the first test is just the midpoint there with the hyper network. So I'm only using the hyper network with the 768V model and that is the result. Let's dive into those XY grids to see how this could be improved here. So we've got the 768 model with just the hyper network, denoising versus guidance scale. This time we've got one of the characteristics of the 2.1 model is that everybody seems to have this COVID mask on. That may be a negative prompt you wish to incorporate. We can also see the characteristic dramatic change here around denoising strength 0.8. With the hyper network alone, I'm not sure there's really a very good image that transfers the characteristics and keeps the pose in this particular example. Moving on to test the style versus sampler, once again we see that they are all very similar and with the hyper network the prompt does not impact it as much as it does with the embedding. Varying the hyper net strength, Again, we can see around 0.5, 0.6, we've got quite a dramatic change. And if I wanted both the characteristics and the pose, once again, I'm not sure I can pick one out of those that is very good. Moving on to the embeddings, this time I'm using the 512 embedding, a quick test there at the midpoint, and that looks not bad. I am very impressed by that. That's a painting. It's in a painting style. It's got the red lips, it's got the blue eyes, it's got the nose, and it seems to have copious amounts of hair, although some of it, it has turned into fur. If we once again dive into those XY grids, we can see here the denoising 0.7 is where things really start to change. And, oh, that is interesting. If we have a look at denoising 1 and guidance scale 15, let's just zoom in on that. 
Now down the bottom right there, that's a very nice image. I do like that. It's completely not what I was going for, but it is a bit of a surprise. If I want both the character and the pose, I think I'd be going somewhere down here around denoising 0.6 and the guidance scale of perhaps 8 or 9. Comparing the sampler versus the style, once again, they are fairly similar, but some very different outputs based on your choice of sampler. Taking a look at the 768 embedding versus the 512 embedding, uh, that is quite a difference. Wow, I think that's almost my favourite to date. The hair, it's got the copious hair, it's got the blue eyes, it's got the nose, it's got the red lips. I think all of the characteristics have been transferred over very well indeed, just in that midpoint area. But let's take a look at that grid to see how it compares. Once again, we can see a very dramatic change down in the bottom right there, the denoising one and the guidance scale 15. Once again, I do quite like that, sort of around that area, maybe denoising one and guidance scale nine. That's very nice. But for this particular test, that midpoint was very good indeed around denoising strength 0.7 and guidance scale 0.7 as well. Comparing this 768 embedding on the various samplers and prompt words, we can see it is still very similar and would need extensive prompting to change the style. At the 768 model, along with the hyper network and embeddings as well, here once again we have that midpoint, which is very much like our target character, but not very much like the pose. The XY grids will, of course, tell us more. We've got the denoising strength versus the guidance scale on the 768 model with both the embedding and the hyper network. And you can see there are some very funky things going on there. Altogether, I think that while with denoising strength one, it is very good at outputting the image from our data set, it isn't very good at posing our character. As we're pushing our latent space out into that character, we can see once again here with the sampler versus style that is very, very strongly pushed towards our training image. If we reduce the strength of the hyper network, so there we have hyper network strength versus number of steps, then we can see that a very low hyper net strength, possibly around 0.1 to 0.2, is better for this particular test result. And if we put all of that together, was I able to pose my one image dataset person exactly the way I wanted? I would say yes. And here are a couple of my favorites. For the 512 depth model, I quite liked this one using the 768 embedding. It's painting, I asked for a painting. It's got the copious hair, it's got the nose, it's got the blue eyes, it's got the red lips. I thought that came out very well. And for a photorealistic style with the 512 depth model, I think this one came out okay. Here I had to use a number of negative prompts, but the result is fairly photorealistic and in the pose I wanted. For Stable Diffusion 2.1 512 base, I quite like this output here. I used both of the embeddings together, so I've got the 512 and the 768 embedding both in the prompt. And that produced this output, which again has all the characteristics I was looking for in the pose I wanted. It was a little bit more difficult to get the photorealistic version. Again here I used both the embeddings and the hyper network as well to produce this output. It's fairly similar, but the chin is quite off. On the 768V model for the painting, it was quite simple. I just had to use the 512 embedding and some very minimal negative prompts and I got this output which I thought was absolutely fine. That's got the character with the characteristics posed in the same way as the initialization image. And for the photorealistic version, I once again combined both the embeddings with the hyper network to produce this result. We've got the red lips, the copious hair, the blue eyes, slightly different nose and a reasonable impression of a photo. And of course, if you really don't care about having your particular character in a particular pose, you can still use your embeddings to make some rather interesting images, even if you've got a robot as input or indeed an anime style artwork. And remember, you can always have massive prompts and use your embeddings in the negative prompts as well to produce some very different outputs. If you're looking for some more hints on prompting in 2.0, then take a look at this video.